If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Hey, in this episode of Mind Pump, we have some pretty good conversations. It starts off where we're talking about parasites. Oh, yeah. Talk about my parasite cleanse. There's not a lot of bro talk in this one today, so <laughs> yeah, you might want to hang in for the whole yeah. episode. Uh, Those of you that just come in here for the information, yeah. this one's got a you know what? full of... I know you're going to miss it, so you people that come just for that, you know, don't worry. I'll <laughs> yeah. bring it back hard. Exactly. You know, Adam episode. talks about his flotation tank experience. We examine Zac Efron's Baywatch workout, and we tell you if it's good or or if it's stupid. Yeah. Uh, and then we get into some he pretty... Is handsome. Some pretty good questions. Uh, we ask... Uh, we actually talk about personal, emotional, psychological growth and how that affects the gains. That's with a Z at the end. Ooh. We also talk about feeling the burn, what that means, and should you aim for it, and will it make you build muscle and burn body fat faster? Or we, should you go get some medication? Then we talk about cluster sets and circuit sets. Are they effective or can they make you hurt yourself faster? Uh, lastly, what is the fat but fit movement? You get to hear our opinions on that. And by the way, uh, for those of you who are new to Mind Pump um, and you're kind of a beginner here, Adam talks about something that we got just for you somewhere in the middle of the episode. So don't fast forward anything at Ooh, all. A little Easter egg. And I think today's the last day for our t shirt promo, if I'm not mistaken, That's right? right. Enroll in the MAPS... Final day! <laughs> Thank you, Adam. <laughs> Enroll in the MAPS RGB bundle, which is nine months of exercise programming, all broken down for you, or the Super Bundle, which is almost a year's worth of exercise programming. Enroll in one of those two, and by the way, those are massively discounted. You'll get uh, your choice of two shirts. And by the way, these shirts are amazing. They're, we had them personally blessed by... Um, a Tibetan monk, yeah, or Justin, one of those two. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I put my essence on it. Uh, you get two shirts for almost free. I think less than a dollar. You can find out about all of this at mindpumpmedia.com. Plus, we want to give away some shirts. Give away some shirts. Oh yeah, yeah. We got twelve reviews this last week. <laughs> That's not, not bad. Not bad. Mm. Yeah, and we're gonna give away four shirts. Oh, good. So the winners are Eat, Sleep, Imagine, mm. Kayla Resick, Ooh, Imagine, Jay Kokoski. And Will Sands, all of you are winners. You're all brilliant uh, review le levers. Man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Great so, job. What? Whoa. So we do want to get those shirts out to you. So send the name, I, the one I just read, to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get it right over to you. Do you know who else has a Kermity quality to their voice? <laughs> Besides your girl well, that you threw under the your bus. Your girl right? didn't like that. No, she was. Yeah. She hates it when I say yeah. it. She wasn't having but that. But it's uh, it sounds good on her. <laughs> it sounds hot. Uh, but do you know who else has a Kermity hot. a Kermity quality? And I, I can't explain it. It's that uh, a little bit of that uh, right? Mm. Um, Yoda. Yeah, I know. Yeah, come on, man. Fucking Yoda, dude. That's right, bitch. Why don't you call was, me Yoda instead of, <laughs> instead of instead of Kermit? Was that supposed to be mind blowing? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know. yeah. No, did you get Kermit? Blowing mind, you <laughs> did. Can I? Can I? Can I put you guys on the spot real quick? Uh, is, is that please. possible? This is what I want you guys to do. Spot me, bro. Because I'm tripping out right now. Hmm. On what? So uh, I did mescaline. I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. I decided to do mescaline. It's just a little mescaline yeah. before we get I'm, going. I'm here. taking it way back. I'm doing yeah. opium. Yeah. I um uh. So I started three, no four, four or five days ago. I bought this uh parasite anti parasite kit, and all it is is just these certain herbs that you take. Like it's got wormwood and black walnut hull, uh, husk and garlic and you know caprylic acid and a few other things, right? And you, you, it's a 15-day protocol. And the reason why I bought it was because my gut was just fucking off, dude. It was really irritating. I did a whole Insta story on this. And these are known as antimicrobials, but they're also effective, <clears throat> legit effective for potential parasites. In fact, I was reading that wormwood is actually used to treat malaria. It's pretty, pretty cool stuff. So hmm. started taking it. And the first couple days I had what they describe on the internet as a felt like a die off. Like I felt kind of shitty and now I feel, wow, man, I feel really fucking good. Doesn't mean I have, I don't, I don't think, I don't know who knows if I had a par parasite or not, but it also, they're also bal help balance out if you have bacterial overgrowth. 
And right now, I feel really fucking good. I think you guys should try it. Mm. Cool. I really do. Yeah. I really <laughs> think on, you guys should fucking try it. I'm on my. I'm on a kick right so now. So you have a die off. <clears throat> well, it's a. It's pretty interesting because I've never really done anything like this. Well, before. Well, what does it require? Did you need to go fasted into it? Do you need? No. A, do you need to do anything? Can, or nope. can you just take it with whatever you're? Consuming? You just take it. Oh well. Yeah. That's now uh, they I can, recommend. I can, I can they, do that. They recommend you eliminate sugar and all these other stuff, which we you know we pretty much don't do anyway. Yeah. yeah. I went 48 arrow fast and then I started doing it, but it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. And I also learned that parasites are more common than people think, especially if you eat a lot of sushi, believe it or not. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. If you eat a lot of sushi, the, uh, there's not great odds. It's not like everybody has them, but it's more common than you would think. Well, what's the, the contributor to that? Which fish? Is it raw like one fish. specific? It's not just one specific fish. No, I think just raw fish. Hmm. The one I took, Doug, was called Parasmart. So no affiliation. We're not affiliated with them. Although we, we should put it in the show notes. Might as well put it in the show notes so people have a link to it. Can you get it on Amazon? Yeah, that's where I got it from. Oh, okay. And the stuff in there, like I said, if if you have like gut imbalances, even just bacterial, it might help you. But what a lot of people notice when they take this stuff is the first couple of days. They feel like they're getting worse. Yeah, I don't know if I, they I'm start up feeling for better. that. That's the only thing right now. So not everybody. Not everybody's like that. And remember, I was going into it already feeling pretty shitty. Yeah. So it's you addressing know? the overgrowth, like potential overgrowth in certain areas. It, that and or if you do have, in fact, uh, you know, parasite stuff going on. And it's funny because my tolerance for ca- for caffeine is much better. So I feel like... Well, what's the symptoms if you have a parasite? Like oh how, man, how do you? Even Here's like- the problem: is there's 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 acute symptoms, so which, which would be obvious, like severe diarrhea, nausea, all that stuff. But there's a lot of other symptoms that are kind of vague, like oh, anxiety and depression and fatigue and you know. Don't uh, you think those ones? Uh, don't you think those ones come after the the major ones though, like diarrhea and the like? Not always. So you remember Dr. Ruscio talking about how he discovered he had parasite when he was in college. He didn't have any gastro symptoms whatsoever. All he had were these kind of psychological symptoms. Oh, where he just wow. wasn't feeling himself. I didn't himself. remember him talking about that. And he went and got tested. In the was life. that on oh, air yeah. or off air he talked to us? No, it, it, it was on, on our show, yeah. our oh, episode okay. with him. And um, the cool thing is, is that the over-the-counter kits are relatively effective for treating, um, for treating parasites. So... Pretty interesting. I've never done it before, but I, I'm I. No, any and con- I'm pretty in touch with my body, and it's pretty. Any pretty concern crazy, that you'll need to take this on take take this now, like because you've like one of the things I didn't like when we started like on our kombucha kick. Kombucha, was kombucha, 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 however the fuck you want to say it. Tomato, tomato, potato, uh, potato. Kombucha. It, it went, <laughs> when I started, I got on this kick where I started taking them like every day. And then I became like dependent on it to f- for my stomach to feel good. No, no, no. You, as a matter of fact, you wouldn't want to take th- these types of, of herbs more than two or three cycles a year max because they can be pretty harsh yeah, uh, right? on the body. Mm. Um, and it even says so on the box. So no, you should not take this all the time. Now, there's certain things you can take relatively re- you know, uh, frequently or, or consistently like garlic. Which has its own antimicrobial, um, you know, effects or whatever, but you know, like wormwood, and it gives you great burps. They don't want you taking it uh, for long periods of time because it can can be not good for you. Where are you? Is there anywhere else that we can get wormwood besides? Yeah, you could buy it. It's a supplement. You could get it. Uh, you can just go online and so when you flip the but, box but around, but there's other uh, things you want to combine it with because. There's different stages in a parasite's life cycle, and different things kill it during different stages. So, like, one herb may be good for killing them when they're alive. Another one may may be good for killing the larva uh, or the eggs uh, or damaging the eggs so that the other herb can kill it. It's pretty disgusting. You know what's crazy? So I Like, get out of me. Dude, if you dive into, like, you go online and you start reading about people's experiences, what people do is they take a picture of their poop. (laughs) <laughs> and they'll have they'll oh, show rate, rate your poo.com th- they'll have pictures and they'll I'm show like the oh this is a parasite this yeah. is a parasite at Sock Come Out <laughs> oh, that's so gross fucking disgusting oh that is disgusting but like like skin issues can be a result of it uh, anxieties like all these psychological effects can be a result of it like that's what Ruscio said he experienced when he was mm. in college like he was just feeling fatigued like he wasn't recovering today and by the way my I have not been eating, eating high calorie at all I've been eating low calorie because I'm trying to kind of you know, compound the effect. So I'm eliminating lots of things. And I did not expect to be as strong as I felt today. And my energy feels 
I don't know, better than it's felt in a long time. And it's, I think it's directly a result of this, 100%. Because I was doing all the probiotics and everything else before. Well, take a pic of your poo. Well, yeah. I did, so I'm going to show you guys right now. I, I, think I, need to, I think I need to do it just so we have some balance in this conversation. So I, Yeah, I'd love to see what you guys experience. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if I can it's do it. It's not expensive. If I can do it with, because uh, I just literally said, okay, I'm on my kick again and back to tracking and doing all that. And Let's see who has the biggest worm. I did, yeah. You know if, I, if it doesn't require me to... to change or shift what i'm doing i can just add it into my routine right now that i'm game for that so you want to hear something gross too is that <laughs> do, do we have a choice even grosser <laughs> Please, he starts yes. telling the story even <laughs> even grosser if you're sexually involved with someone okay the odds that they'll <laughs> which we all are they'll <laughs> yeah. well that person so let's say you do this treatment right and you do in fact have like parasite and you're feeling a lot better your significant other probably has it too yeah. because you guys because you've been because you put your mouth down there, pump, you have sex, you do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. They're going to get it. They might. The likelihood that they'll have it is high too. So if you're doing it and you're feeling great, you might want to buy a box for your girl <laughs> and be like, honey, you got to do this too. Otherwise, we're going to be passing around the parasite. Do you go through the whole box? Is that the deal? It's 15 days. The one I bought is a 15-day cycle. and I. Oh, how many days are you on right now? I'm on day, I want to say five or six. You only five days in? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. But what do you mean? Oh my God! Uh, you and your like. <laughs> what's the opposite of a hy- hypochondriac who thinks like everything? You, the hypochondriac is like thinks that everything that is wrong with. Well, them, uh, so here's you're so that guy. Hypersensitive. Dude. You're so, so that guy. Well, <laughs> so here's so here's the thing. Yeah. If uh, he's a believer, I'm very, very well. No, you guys know this. I'm I'm very very in tune with how my body feels, especially yeah. food, because I'm so sensitive, and I've been dealing with gut issues and all my normal stuff. All my avoiding this and eating that and taking this probiotic and fasting was not helping me. And it was like three weeks, dude. It was like three weeks of like all these symptoms that were really fucking annoying. And I did this. And uh, the first day, the first one or two days I did it, I was feeling almost like a little worse. And then by the third day, I was like, whoa, I'm feeling. And then by day four... Like I had the best poop I've had in a long time. You're also and com- I'm still having. You're it. also coming off a 48 hour fast, right? The 48 hour fast. I came out of the 48 hour fast, started this this treatment, and I got a little worse for like the first couple days, which really, really, uh, what's the word? Um, Sucked. Made me yeah, like disappointed. Like what the fuck is going on here? I was really angry. But by day three, well, I would think that has five, something to do with you being on a complete empty stomach and then ingesting something like that. That's just like whenever. Well, like I said, I know my body really well, and I've done this before. And usually, if I come off a forty-eight hour fast and then I introduce the right foods, I'm like cured. But it didn't seem to be the case. Um, but now I feel really good. Again, this is my personal anecdote. However, if you like talking to Doctor Ruscio. Dr. Ruscio said this to me, quote, he said, I said, dude, how common are, because he had, you know, parasite, he actually tested for him. I said, how common are they? And he said, they're not super common, but they're more common than people realize, because in modern Western societies, we think that oh, that never happens, right? And he goes, it's more common than we think. It's not super common. He goes, what's really common is dysbiosis, where we have our gut floor is just all over the place. And he said, the things that are in these parasite cleanses are also antimicrobials in which, and remember he got, he talked about this on the podcast, how for some people just controlling the overall growth of their bacteria will help them because they just have this environment where shit's just growing out of control. And he said, these are that people- That sounds like Justin's stomach to me. Maybe. <laughs> and these are people- so that I, I picture his stomach growing. just like crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's just like this afro of, of bacteria. When I, whenever I follow him after he's gone to the bathroom, I just assume that like there must be like this crazy fucking shit storm of a party going on. There's, a lot, of, there's a lot of bacteria. <laughs> Listen, we know how to get down. And they don't want to die. Inside me. They cling to the side of the toilet. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, Adam, how was your, uh, speaking of floaters, how was your floats? Oh, uh, your float gross. Tank? Uh, uh, let me tell you, I am... Because you did the float station for the first time. I am beyond excited uh, for these guys to be down the street. I got a chance to meet the owner, Ryan, so a little shout out to Ryan. Um, uh, and we got The to, float station, is that the name yeah. of it? Yeah. Okay. Did you... I I'm mean, jealous. He, I'm the only one now that hasn't done it. Well, in here, and you know what's crazy? S- sometimes, like, uh, so you know, Sal, you never know if he's, like, overexcited and exaggerating because he does it so much. I'm, oh, so God. I went into it with, like, this... <laughs> You know, whatever type. I have of to act. roll my eyes really hard. <laughs> yes. Let's be honest. It's I like mean, a, hey, you sing yeah. the greatest song. Hey, yeah. if, you, if you listen to Mind Pump uh, long enough, this is the story. This is the typical thing you'll hear. I'll yeah. say something. I'll yeah. be like, 
Adam will be like, no, it's bullshit. It. Yeah. Adam does it, and he's like, it's the greatest thing ever. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then same, it's like, and it's like we have these ideas, it's and then it same becomes, cycle. no, 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 you know, I, okay, not to float, like, repeatedly. Um, anyway, let, just tell us your experience. Yeah. Let, me, t- let me tell you, let me tell you a couple things, okay? So, <laughs> uh, right away, what I was most, the facility is fucking awesome. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. They designed it And amazing. did you know that they're building upon that? Yeah, I know. They're putting like a whole meditation. Yes, open area. there's going to be an outside lounge area where you can get some sun, and like, oh, it's going to be dope. Like, it's already dope, and it's going to be like 10 times better. Doper. So I'm very excited to uh, do so. I'm actually going to get him, uh, by the way, so you guys know, I'm inviting him down here to meet and hang out with all of us. Cool. So I've already got him to agree to, we're going to go and do a whole video vlog series in there, so that'll be awesome. Rad. Uh, so we'll introduce everybody to the actual location. Now, right away after I went, I told this, I said this on my Insta story, uh, there was some things that... I would do differently now now that I've experienced it because it really wasn't that amazing for me. And I didn't get like this, whoa, just this was so great and so relaxing. In fact, I never fell asleep. Um, it took till almost the very end when the music came on to tell me I had 10 minutes left for me to finally fully relax. And so I and I and I and I know there's a lot of reasons why that was one. I was really excited to be there. Like I was really excited to check it out. I can't wait. I, <laughs> yeah, I was talking to the owner. I can't wait to relax. <laughs> I was talking to the owner. I'm exactly. Relax the fuck out of this. Exactly. I went. I went in, and I should know better. Like that, which Katrina and I had a really uh, intense training session, uh, maybe a couple hours before that. So I had. Is that what you call it? Yeah. <laughs> I had a I had a pump on. I had some adrenaline going because of the place. It was a new place. Uh, I was excited of it. So I could tell that I was really uneasy when I got in there. And there was some things that I should have done that I didn't do till about halfway through. What I thought was super dope. Well, and Justin, this is the part you will dig. Yes. I would use this like different ways each time. So I would use this one to go in just to purely meditate, fall asleep and relax. Then I would actually love to do, doing tension movements hmm. while you're floating in salt water is sick. Because I would take, so once I got where I was floating completely and I couldn't completely relax, I'm like, well, fuck, I'm in this thing. I may as well like kind of stretch out everything and take it through for full internal, external rotation, stretching my finger. And I started taking, like, while I'm floating, I took my hips and I rotated my femur oh, as far as I could internally, then as far as I could externally. Huh. And then I could feel, and I you're could, all like free and suspended. Yes, you're so it, yeah. free and suspended. And I could see, I could feel all of my imbalances, like my, my hips. I could, I squeeze my glutes and kind of, I could feel myself neutralize my spine. And then I got my posture where, it, so I was like totally doing like posture check on myself huh. while I was floating. And yeah, because you're, be sus- awesome. yeah, because you're suspended. So I got like this kind of great core work and did all this stuff while now, I was Now you didn't it. feel when you, because when I came out, I felt like my central nervous system was so sensitive. It bring, so sensitive because it really brings it down. I could see this being hmm. like CNS recovery. And well, when yeah. you come out, Lights were really bright. Uh, like lots of people was almost too much. Like I almost mm. wanted to go meditate afterwards. So to like reacclimate to the world. You're you're right. It uh, hmm. but you said that, so I was kind of ready for it. So right away, before I even walked out the room, I put my shades on. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get blasted by the light outside because it was still light outside. Um, I did notice too that the music when it came on the second time. So I had earplugs in, and I'm laying under the water, and. When the music, you could, the music's really faint. If you have earplugs mm-hmm. in and you're under the water, it's really, really faint. Well, after I had relaxed for an entire hour and then the music at the last 10 minutes comes back on, it was, I could hear, it was so loud. Mm-hmm. It was like, it sounded like it was twice as loud, but it wasn't louder. It was just that I was, mm-hmm. I'd laid there in complete silence. My breathing sounded loud. Mm-hmm. Like that was part of why I couldn't settle too. Was like breath. So think about <sighs> that. Think about that, right? Think about how our mm-hmm. CNS is being con- constantly bombarded with, signals electronic signals people loudness you know all these frequencies this is why one of the reasons why it's so rejuvenating and i find this more as i get older it's so rejuvenating to go in nature where you're not getting bombarded with shit and why you feel so replenished right so yeah you go in this you know float tank and it's sensory deprivation literally Mm. it is completely limiting it's like a reset it's yeah and that's what i felt i felt like my cns Got a crazy reset, which is why when you come out, you, you don't want to go to... Like, we went to a restaurant to eat lunch. Yeah, it's like too much. And I was like, this yeah. is too much. Like, I feel too sensitive to this. I need to let my body react to me. I could see mm. how doing this, if you're in really hard training and you're pushing your body to the limit and you're on that brink of, like, overdoing it or not doing it enough, you know, how you, especially for athletes where you're always pushing that limit, yeah. I could totally see 
how this has a huge... Did you notice he had stealing fire up there also? Yeah. So, I, I mean, <clears throat> as soon as I walked in, I was like, oh, man, great mm-hmm. book, right? Mm-hmm. And started yeah. talking to him, and he's like, oh, you've read it. I'm like, yeah, not only have I read it, I've actually interviewed Jamie Wheel and Stephen Collar. He's mm-hmm. like, what? Mm-hmm. And so then I told wow. him all about Mind Pump, and then what we I said, I would love to come in here, shoot a whole vlog series. So we exchanged numbers, and I'm follow up on him. But I also thought, after I did it, like, wow, now if I could go back and do it again, I would do some things leading up to that to like get the maximum benefit of like completely relaxing. Well, what everybody says to do is to have um, some cannabis beforehand and edible. I, Apparently, it's supposed to be a, a, a much more trans, what do they call it? Transcendent uh, experience. Transcendent. Yeah. Transcendent. I just made up a word. Trans- so, hey, Adam. Transcendental <laughs> railroading. Sh- sh- shout out to my boy, Adam. <laughs> uh, Rubbing off uh, on you a little bit. <laughs> So uh, I don't know. It's, yes, I got them. And, and you know, uh, you know, when people analyze what, what happens when you sleep with the right amount of cannabinoids, it imp- improves the, you know, the the relaxation state or whatever the, the right brain waves when you're sleeping. So I, I, wonder- I went in high, so I went in. I, <laughs> yeah, I went, of course. Come like, on, that's yeah. silly, Sal. Yeah, <laughs> come on, it's, yeah, come on yeah, dude. Of course, it's, yeah. it's a week. It's a weekend. I'm going in. Absolutely, I'm going to smoke before I went in. So I, I did. Um, I because I didn't fall asleep, I can't say that it it yeah. helped or didn't help. Um, I think like I, I said, noticed this with you though, you have it seems like you resist because you know remember you, you know why because he's analyzing too much. Either that or so they talk about this in uh, meditation or when people take psychedelics and do shamanic voyages or whatever that some people have a tough time yeah. letting go is what the words that they'll use it yeah. and i noticed this when we all did the the what was it called the lucid yeah, light lucid light at paleo right like like me justin and taylor were able to like chill cuz the lights are flashing your eyes and it is a lot but then when you relax you can go into it and you yeah. it feels very expansive and you see like all these 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 you know lights and stuff and you were saying, Adam, how it was just too much. You wanted to blink your eyes, and then you didn't like it until it like stopped. Yeah, it was really yeah. annoying. And I'm uh, and uh, and then you've also said how it's real hard for you to just sit and meditate. Like you need to do stuff and whatever. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, this is I, and I yeah, it might be I've been thinking about this too because um you know I had I had a lot of the same same mechanisms in place when I go through anything like that too and. Uh, and this is why we, we, when we started using like brand FM and all that, I was like, Oh cool. Cause it's like guided and, and you can kind of, uh, follow something and it's not like you're just sitting there and, and trying to like get to that place. But then even for me, more impactful was, was going through that Wim Hof breathing. And so this is like, so my two cents is like, I, I I'm curious to see if Adam will, uh, if, if he goes through that, does the ice plunge, like if that kind of force, cause it really does. It forces you to not analyze anything. Like mm. you can't tense, you can't like focus on anything else other than just trying to no get choice. outside of yourself. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's that's the only time it's ever worked for me, dude. Well, Brain FM's been a game changer for me. Um, and you've talked well, about this in the past. Yeah, Brain FM's been a game changer for me. So, and don't forget, so I'm you know my woman of six plus years is like she's a, an expert on this is a meditation genius yeah. bro. Yeah. and her whole family is so this is not a new path for me which i always got to make that clear to all our listeners like oh adam's experienced all this no i've been in fucking in this and before that i was religious and prayer and all that stuff so this is all familiar territory for me right I just and I as soon as well, I got that's in there, the hesitancy is though, right? Well, because you know, I think a lot of people take a lot of this stuff, which has been around. The float tanks have been around since the seventies. It's not fucking new technology. I think even yeah. the sixties, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's been around for a while. Yeah, sixties or seventies. I know it's been around for a very long time, and why it's so popular right now is because of it's the counterculture to being plugged in so much. Mm-hmm. And it I think it's a great tool, a great resource. Now when people start getting very religious about it and get woo woo about it is when I roll my eyes because I've been around all this for a very long time. And I'll tell you like the lucid light like it's f- annoying as fuck to have a light flickering in your face. <laughs> I don't give a fuck who you are. Like it maybe that it relaxes you and it helps you. That's good. That's you. You know, everybody is different, and it. And oh it, no, no doubt, no doubt, everybody's <clears throat> different. Uh, you, you've and just the, you've said you've talked about this many times that how you have a tough time settling down. Yeah, and you know so I mean? and when I, and when I went in the float tank, man, I I got in, I got in, and right away, like you know, because they let you can play the music, you can have the lights going, you do all that stuff. Uh, you know, I shut everything down. 
I focused on my breathing. I did my on my box breathing to really try to s- settle me down. Like I said, I rotated everything in and out and kind of like stretched everything out. So I wasn't in there like, you know, oh, come on, work, work for me. No, I know better than to do that. But, but there was things, like I said, I was excited to be in there. That probably didn't help the cause. We had a really hard training session a couple hours before that. So I was probably amped and pumped still from that. I drink a lot of water and fluid. So I probably was, you know, even though I went pee right before, I had to go pee again towards the end. So you know, there was a lot of th- factors that came into play that didn't allow me to get fully relaxed. Yeah, but- I, I don't. I definitely don't think it's a it's a competition or you're you know one person's better or worse. I think. Well, what I'm saying, I is think I, it's just it's just your your I'm experience not, is different. I'm not fighting it either. You know, so that's it's it's never been. Uh, I mean, I think right now, I I do uh, arguably probably the most of this stuff. You know, I don't talk about it because I'm not a big fan of the like how I feel like how people can get when they start talking about Mm -hmm. the meditation and being connected to the ground like every day I do all these things to and it's made a huge improvement on life I'll tell you what though above all the things that we've experienced and we've done brain fm has been the biggest game changer for me I all of them have helped all of them have, have have helped me settle down become more present Brain FM has been the game changer of all of them. I wonder I've if seen, I've a- seen it firsthand too. When we were in Mexico and, and you were like on the couch and you're going through just the um, the meditation part, like you're completely. He started snoring and, and was completely gone, like within like a couple of minutes. In a room full of everybody I, watching, yeah, everybody TV was and talk. doing stuff. It was crazy. I, I wonder if you if they, do they do they sell uh, waterproof headphones? Yeah. I'm wondering if you could get like put your phone in like a good Dude, I already sealed t- bag or something where you can listen to it in the float tank. So I already mm. talked to him about it. Oh, okay. So oh. I already talked to him about it. Like they're they're going to implement it into the float tank. Oh, so it'll be already in. Yeah, there. it'll be playing. That in That would there. be weird. Well, so check this out. This yeah. is what I did when I was in Mexico. I got on one. Oh, of the, you told us. Yes, That's right. I got on a raft. I put my Bose headphones on and my Bluetooth, so I could have the phone outside, right, of all the water. And I floated on top of the water with my my meditation brain. Effect. Mm. Oh, bro, that I nothing has been more relaxing than that. Mm-hmm. So for me, that's another thing. If I were to go back, I actually enjoy the music to kind of set brain FM really really helps settle me into that mm-hmm. into that that position. Otherwise, it is tough to get a lot of the stuff going on in my head to fully settle down. I did notice it towards the end once I. You know, do you uh, think if you had stayed in, let's say they didn't kick you out after an hour and you stayed for two hours, you think it with a second hour would have been different? <sighs> that's hard to say. Yeah. yeah, that's hard to say because uh, there was a part of me too that was wondering, you know, like, oh, I wonder if I've been in here for 30 minutes. Because yeah, even when I did it, I didn't right away. At first, I was kind of like, I felt like my body was spit. So th- what I, here's what I, what I did when I was in there is I felt like, I don't, did you experience this where you're laying flat, relaxed, and then you get the sensation like you may be spinning? Or floating to one side and you don't know and you want to go reach and touch the wall. Did you get that at all? Oh, of course. Yeah, you definitely. So get- what I did was is when I was in that and I was kind of like, and it kept me like preoccupied is I just said, fuck it. I'm going to imagine that I'm spinning. And I went into it to make myself feel it more. Then that actually helped me uh, meditate instead of being like, okay, I'm not spinning. I said, all right, I'm spinning. Let's go into it and see if I could actually me- like almost play mind games with myself, like make myself feel it even more. Yeah. And then I noticed that I was able to get into it, but the first, and it's hard. Did you lose perception of time in there? Cause I almost felt like, Oh yeah, definitely. It, yeah, it, the, yeah. There was a, there was a point where I was like, man, do I still got like another 45 minutes or something. Right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden the music came on. I was like, okay. It I'm just all... goes to show you that your perception of time is you perceive it, uh, based on external stimulus a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's an internal rhythm too, but, and they've done studies of this where they've locked people in a room and then they don't tell them what, if it's night or day and see what happens. Yeah. And uh, it's weird because if it's an hour. Felt like 15 minutes to me, which yeah. was very strange. I, I'm I'm very excited to do it again, knowing the, what the experience was like getting out the first one. So now I can like prep myself mm. leading into it because I'm going to like very I'm cool. gonna, yeah I'm gonna yoga stretch and do some of my movements like this so my body is completely relaxed I'm definitely doing that yeah tension stuff yeah you're talking about oh, oh dude that sounds awesome that in itself is worth like so yeah. I was telling Katrina like I wouldn't mind actually going in there sometimes and actually playing music that I'm not trying to fall asleep and just doing tension because my body Rage against the machine my yeah no <laughs> my body felt so good just being suspended like that and feeling all my imbalances like I was tucking my chin my hip I, and 
mm. it was crazy because I could feel like mm. I could move my hips here and and move my spine. Well, it makes a lot of sense because then it 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 brings it back to everything is intrinsic and that you take gravity out of it, so it's not like you're fighting forces. Mm. Yes, you're, you're creating. You forces. may you may have just uh, the marketing <laughs> the marketing side of me just may. I, I mean, know. That's you amazing. may have created a new well I'm, correctional exercise. Like, totally, I'm self assessment. That yeah. to me this time because I didn't like I said I didn't get as meditative of an experience out of it this time because I like I said I think of how I went into it but I it fucking felt great on my body I felt like I reset my CNS everything after and I felt amazing afterwards and I spent a majority of the time like I said connecting all that extending my foot all the way out all the way up rotating my shoulders in out like and, and touching all those areas and then trying and then what I would do is I tr- literally intrinsically try and hold myself in this perfect neutral spine alignment with all, where I, I know all my imbalances right I have this slight forward head I know I have an anterior pelvic tilt I know that my one side my my foot slightly internally so I knew I know where all these issues are so I'm like trying to address all of them intrinsically mm-hmm. and keep myself neutral now did you try after like in between sets yeah, just to like I, I found this really hard to completely relax. Well, that's what I would do between, It took right? me stages. Like, I'd relax, and I'd be like, okay, I'm totally relaxed. I'd be like, oh, no, wait a minute. I'm kind of tensing this a little bit. All right, relax that. So then what I did is I did a checklist. All right, toes, totally relaxed. Feet, oh, shit, we got to relax those. Ankles. And as I moved up, I realized I was holding at the slightest bit of tension in each part of my body where I was holding my position a little bit. And mm. it was really weird to just... Go through and be totally, totally, totally relaxed. I didn't realize how hard that was. Yeah. yeah. Very difficult. Did you guys, uh, not to change the subject, but did you guys, what's the deal with this whole Zac Efron body, Baywa- Baywatch <laughs> workout it's thing? So Baywatch, just came, Baywatch yeah. just came out this weekend. Yeah. So it just got released this weekend. So, of course, all over the cover of all the magazines and the grocery store and everything like that is the sexy Zac Efron and oh, what he God. looks like and how it's he's like when 300 came he's out so handsome so and you know what this this reminds me of something that has been on my mind anyways that we should do because so many of these terrible celebrity trainers get all this fucking yeah notoriety for doing shit workouts I I looked at the workout so they published the workout you can see what it is and it's not horrible it just could be a lot it's like better. a bro split you know a push right uh, there, there is. I'm looking even at that, even it's it's the movements they chose could be the, you could do Bro, so much better. Yeah, can I just tell you what happened here? I'll tell you 100 percent what happened. Number one, pretty sure I'd bet a lot of money that this is not the workout that he did all the time. 100 oh, percent guarantee know. you. What they did is they just put exercises together because now you can buy, you can pay for this. Uh, you can also pay for this Baywatch workout, mm. and it also helps pump up the. The movie itself, yeah. but I'm looking at it right now, and there's nothing spectacular about it. In fact, I think the exercise order is a little bit interesting. I don't, I don't really even like it um, the way they put some of these exercises together. Um, and his celebrity co- here's the thing with celebrity trainers: Have you guys seen so far a celebrity trainer that's worth like their salt? You know no, what I mean? No, I haven't seen any of them do anything that's the trainers that I respect the most. Don't typically train. I read Oprah's trainer, his book way back when. I don't, I don't even know if it's the same trainer she has now or whatever. But I remember reading his. It wasn't bad. Um, but mo- for the most part, most of these guys are just uh, they're not the greatest programmers for yeah. sure, dude. So Zach Efron's trainer is Patrick Murphy, and the you know uh, Zach Efron reached five percent body fat after just twelve weeks of training. Well, obviously, super dedicated diet, exercise probably on something as well. They're in Hollywood for fuck's sake and they make a lot of money. But it's just a regular three-day split. Yeah. Back, biceps, legs, shoulders, chest, arms. Yeah. And I'm looking at the exercises and I really don't like the way they... It would be together. it would be fun to actually take that exact workout and the, the basic bones and structure of it and just improve upon it. Yeah. Like how we would improve it. That would it, be fun. Yeah. To break it down and, and show like, okay, let's let's add some compound lifts in here. Let's do something that actually I has mean, some, they've got some they've this got is a, some, this is a position I would this is a position I'd love to have in this company where we had some one young kid who like all they were doing is like what's hitting the fucking newsstands right now. What what's the latest tr- thing that's trending and then we would evaluate it and then improve upon it. Yeah. It's so it, for free. It like, so reminds me of 300 off. and it's like anytime there's somebody in great shape has awesome abs and it like it's so brilliant to just jump on that bandwagon and, and create oh, like something that directly markets to that cuz people are just like so 
superficial. Bro, I mean, his, how, his, many, his, how many trainers have become famous because of that, right? They yeah. become famous after, the, uh, you know. The what, 300 workout, the oh, Wolverines workout. The guy oh, who got is, ready for Superman. What's his, what he did his whole here. thing. I oh, remember. no. Uh, oh, yeah. What's his name? That yeah. one dude, the super handsome guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like his leg split uh, starts with leg press. <laughs> God, why are they doing leg press? Why are they having people leg press at all? <laughs> I, don't I don't just have them squat, barbell squat, like the well, best exercise on earth. So we could, I think we should do that. Let's put yeah. that up. A dumbbell squat front raise. So there's this, there was this trend a oh. while ago in fitness that was stupid. Why would you do that? Well, exactly. There was this trend in fitness that was probably about, I don't know, 15 years ago. Do you remember this? Where trainers would take two exercises and, and combine them. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, we're going to do a walking lunge side that lateral used to be like twist. A, yeah, exactly. It used to be competitive. You'd do like one move that did like three or four different things. Yeah. And you're just like, fuck. Well, let's, let's <laughs> for it's like a circus in here. I know, I, do shit. I know we, we, we got to get to our Q and a, but let's real quick, because you brought that one up. Let's just right away. Explain why that is stupid to me. Yeah. Like a squat to a front race. One of the number one. Okay. Top. This is top three for sure. For everybody. When they squat, the, having good thoracic mobility because of the fact that, that everything is rounded and forward because we do everything in front of us, computers, driving, whatever. <laughs> so your pecs, your your delts, your anterior. You're already fighting to get yeah, your shoulders to retract exactly. properly. You're yeah. already, you already struggle Stupid. to get your shoulders in a retracted position when you're in a deep squat. So to ask somebody to do a front shoulder raise while you're there, yeah. you're making a posture, a, a, a imbalance that m a majority of people already have even right. worse. Yes. That's I, why that's 100%. just horrific. I could, I could yeah. see you're how better you're, off doing like a squat to a reverse yeah. Tell me you're not going to round your shoulders at all when you're no, trying to no, lift of course. And, and raise. And, and not only that, but I th so I think, so you know when people do a squat, they need to put their arms out in front of them for balance. Maybe that's where he's coming up with the... The rationale behind it. I could see well, this as a, a front loaded squat. I know, exactly. I could see how this could be maybe a conditioning exercise. Or you know, goblet, sometimes a goblet squat. Yeah, where you're trying to get someone to like, you know, just just move. So you're like, okay, here, do this. Do it's just exercises. aimless movements. It's, you know what I mean? It, yes. It's, it's not, it has no purpose. No. And so, yeah. well, and this is it's, what's it's annoying. And this is what, here's the thing too. So what happens? Why, why are these why these keep surfacing why they keep uh getting all this attention is people put together these weird combinations and because you've net like maybe a consumer yeah you've never thought to put the, Ooh, i've oh, never done that this is the special moves and this yeah. is the part that always pisses me off is that this is when you look at maps if there's any knock on it, people are like, oh, I've seen those movements. It's so simple. Yeah, well, right? Especially uh, red or anabolic. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, we took what the, the biggest bang for your buck movements that are going to give you the most, build the most amount of muscle, burn the most amount of fat. That's how we designed it. It's, it's this, the, beauty, the beauty of it is the simplicity of it. Mm -hmm. And it'd be really easy to throw a bunch of crazy, unique exercises people have yeah. never seen and have a hard time doing all together and say, here's the MAPS program. That would be awful. Be awful. That's mm. not the idea. This is what drives me crazy. No, man. the ma the magic is in in doing the exercises properly and in programming them. So, uh, but we know it's pretty uh, conclusive. The exercises that are going to give you the best results, and they're the ones that you keep hearing about: deadlifts, squats, overhead presses. You know, heavy rows. Uh, you know, supine presses, bench press. You know, and then there's twisting exercises for that plane. I mean. Uh, it's not rocket science. Now, of course, if you're priming, there's where you're going to get some more, com you know, complex movements. Or if you're training for mobility, God, he got into, there's men, he got into men's fitness too. Yeah, is that the one we were in? Men's or, fitness? Yep. No, yeah. we we're in men's journal. Men's journal. Oh, men's journal. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. All right, bring Wait. on, bring on the bird. <laughs> being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quee-quad. First question is from the Logan Doherty. Do you think personal, emotional, psychological growth aids are detriments or positives for physical growth? For example, Adam focused on the ego check. Did that help or harm his fitness goals? Uh, do you want to answer first, Adam, or, or cause since he talked about you? The, I, this has been on my mind a lot, and this is actually a really good question um, because 
right now I am just transitioning back to tracking my food and getting really regimen about my training and my diet. And I've been intuitive eating and intuitive training for quite some time now. It's been, <clears throat> I don't remember when I started, but it's it's been a while now. And it's been awesome. It's been very freeing. It's uh, I've maintained myself in decent shape. Uh, I've, I've made leaps and bounds with my mobility. Like I've never felt so great uh, with my mobility, my back pain, I've got none of it. My connectivity to my feet and my, even the way my toes are spread out look different. Like so much, I've made huge improvements. And then you talk about, you know, I've been reading aggressively right now. So I'm knocking out at least one to two books every single month, uh, spending t- more time meditating, doing things like the float tank like we talked about, doing a ton of this stuff. And it's been awesome. All of it's been awesome. It's been great. Now, that being said, um, it has slightly detoured me from uh, my aesthetic goals. From them gains. Yeah, from them gains, from trying to be, you know, Mr. Big Buff Guy. So I don't think, though, it's made major detriments because it's just changed my focus. Um, it's just those things have been a priority, and the other ones I – Part of me completely letting them go is not because I couldn't manage them with all those things. Like I could track and still do all those things. I could, you know, increase my training volume and still do all those things. It's just that for me, part of, you know, truly letting go and being completely intuitive about how I train and how I eat required me not caring about those things. And so I intentionally let go of all that and I dove deeper into the reading, the meditating and doing all those things. So this will be something that'll be exciting is to what well, maybe not exciting for me. For me, it'll be exciting to learn about myself is as I move forward right now, I'm going to put a lot of focus back on tracking, training and building my physique as if I was competing. In fact, I was even thinking about running a uh, running myself to get ready for a show as if I was going to do a show, even if I don't do it, but alongside a schedule of one of the big shows that's coming up like USA's or Olympia or something and just, you know, diet for eight to 12 weeks and let people kind of follow my journey while I do that, even if I don't get on stage. So, and meanwhile, I'm going to keep up all the reading, keep up the meditating, keep up all the things that I've been doing. And so, you know, I'll probably be able to speak to this even better in about three months while I'm trying to manage the two of them. So, I don't think that it's been detrimental. I think it's definitely uh, made such huge improvements that even if I decided to let them all go, it's connected some major dots for me on on my own body and awareness and health and uh, my relationship with exercise and food. And it's made me uh, in relationship with myself and my own image. Like So I've been able to you know, let that go and be like, I don't need to have, you know, the biggest arms or I don't need to look this certain way. Like I'm, as long as I'm healthy and I'm making self-improvement as far as my overall physique and, and psychological growth and emotional growth, um, that's a huge win for me. So I think it's all on how you define, how are you defining physical growth? If you're, if I took a, let's say a top level national competitor bodybuilder, you know, 260 pounds shredded on a shit ton of gear and uh, probably not taking care of, you know, their body and their health very well. And then they go on a personal growth, a personal, you know, psychological, emotional, you know, personal growth path where they're checking their ego. Um, at the end of that, they're, they if they do it right, they probably will stop all the ridiculous gear. They probably will stop harming their body with the amount of food that they're eating and they probably will lose muscle. But is that a negative? Is that a detriment? Or is that more a true reflection of their Ex- true selves? Excellent point. And that's, that's what you have to ask yourself. Here's what I noticed for myself. I noticed <clears throat> for me, um, and, I've been doing this for, and I've been doing this for a very long time, is when I, uh, when I train intuitively, eat intuitively, and when I'm really, really honest with myself, when I'm really honest with how I eat, and I'm really in tune with doing things for overall wellness, my body likes to settle between 188 uh, and 186 pounds, just where it it likes to settle. And I'm lean, I've got some strength, and I feel good. Sometimes my ego creeps back in, 
and I want to get stronger again and I want to build a little bit again and I start throwing in a little bit of you know extra food and I train my change my training a little bit and my my weight creeps up into the low 190s sometimes mid 190s and th- th- for you know so I've got kind of two body types right but I had this conversation with my girlfriend last night and you know she was saying like oh you know I looked at pictures of myself back when I was super skinny and I don't like the way my face looks. So I'm afraid of, you know, whatever going there. Or what if, you know, I don't like the way I look when I do this, you know, this type of nutrition. And we were talking about this. And I'm like, you know, your body will kind of settle where it where it's going to be its healthiest if you're uh, as true to yourself as you possibly can be with your food and nutrition, mm. whatever that means. So at the end of the day, really w- focusing on your ego is always a positive. It's always going to end up being a positive. You may not look the way you did when it was all about your ego, but then again, is that was that a better place to be in? Well, it's, well, it's closer to balance. I mean, mm-hmm. I feel like there's the opposite side of that because you guys are kind of coming from the, the muscular end of, of the world, right? Like we're focused on getting bigger and powerful and strong and uh, improving your body from that aspect of it. Whereas, you know, being in a place like paleo effects or me growing up in Santa Cruz, you know, it's like, I get a lot of the check your ego, a lot of the, um, mindfulness, a lot of this kind of like, you know, super in touch and in tune, uh, from, from that aspect, but they just, they're, they're not focused on strength. They're not focused on, uh, you know, physic physicality. There's extremes the to both sides. So, you know, so that's the thing. It's like the you just have to kind of realize where you are currently, and you know where you can navigate towards you know more balance. I I, I think if you're you're if you really are true about your ego check, and you look and you're your true example of yourself, you will be very balanced. And you said there's extreme on both sides. There's people, lots of them, we know them, we've met them, who identify so strongly with, I'm going to be healthy and I'm going to be, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to explore my consciousness and whatever, that they identify with that so strongly that that become they're like bodybuilders, but just in that sense. Right, right, exactly. The, the, they're, they're no better in my I opinion. Will get, there is one person who I've met who has exemplified, in my personal opinion, the truest expression of themselves. Paul Check. Paul Check. Yeah. And when you look at Paul... Okay, here from an objective standpoint, here's a man that is 55 years old. He takes his shirt off. He's muscular as fuck. He doesn't look like a bodybuilder, but he's goddamn impressive. The dude can move like better than almost anybody I know and he's 55. He's got abs. He he move he talks calm. He's uh he you know, he's just a true expression. He eats. He doesn't sit there and I have to get this much protein. I have to get this much fat. The guy went vegan for a while because his body was telling him he needed to do it. And he said he lost some muscle while doing it, but that was what his body was telling him to do. When I meet someone like that, I say that, that to me is, the, is a great example of true wellness and health. Because I've also met the other side, the hippie who they look like they're pale, like they're, they're, like they're dying because mm-hmm. they've identified so strongly with that end that they're not even eating healthy either. They're just like the wind depriving, blows and they just fall. They're over. depriving their body of certain nutrients and they're not strength training because everything is all about stretching and relaxing and, you know, you know, you know, that side. I think Paul was a great example. When I met years ago, when I met Jack LaLanne, Jack LaLanne blew me away and he was like that also. I looked at Jack and I'm like, and he was 90 something years old yeah, when I met him. Yeah. So impressive to me. And he gave off that energy. And there's a few times in my life where I've met people who were older, who really blew me away with that. There was a woman that used to work out at one of the gyms that I manage. She came into my gym. She was in her 60s. She had long gray hair. She had these deep wrinkles in her face, but you could, but she looked so healthy and vibrant. There was nothing fake about her. There was no facelift. There was no augmented breasts. There was no, you know, she wasn't coming in, you know, to, to look a particular way. She just did it because it made her feel good and she was healthy. And she and sometimes she came in and she lifted weights heavy. Sometimes she came in and she would meditate in the aerobics room or she'd do yoga or, or she'd do body weight movement or whatever. You know, I, I would see her doing all these different things and her workouts at the time to me didn't make sense. Now they make plenty of sense. And I remember meeting this woman and being like, so attracted to her and I don't mean it in the sexual sense I just meant like she was a magnet and I would talk to her all the time because I was completely blown away by her approach and now looking back she was just really 
you know, listening to Super her body. Super in tune with her body. Exactly. Yeah. So at the end of this this path, here's what's gonna here's what will happen. Here's what will happen to me is I would go the pendulum would swing in either direction. I'd go, oh, I'm intuitive eating, I'm intuitive training, and it turned into I don't care. And yeah, then, yeah. okay, now I care. I'm going to track and build up everything. Oh, no, I care too much, and now it's all ego. And I go back and forth. But I noticed through each cycle, the pendulum swinged a little less and a little less. And I'm somewhere now in the fourth cycle of this. I'm nowhere near yeah. where per, where I feel will be you know, well, ideal. Well, that's the important thing is you, you can never really be fully comfortable. <clears throat> like like you, you have to it, introduce uh, like new stimulus. You have to like kind of check yourself where you are to – you know, okay, I'm here now. Where do I improve from here? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you know, you get to a place, but then you want to you want to introduce something else to to provide uh, that change uh, from either direction. And here's something that uh, something else I noticed. I used to look at really shredded bodybuilders and uh, you know bikini competitors, and I would admire like how they look, and I'd be like, fuck, I wish I could look like that guy without having to take steroids. Like I. Wow, they look so cool. Oh my God, that's so impressive. And as I've gone through this like self examination, ego check, understand wellness and health from different levels and different understandings, when I see that now, what I see is uh, dysfunction, uh, both physical dysfunction and just their movement, you know, and you can see muscle imbalances and stuff, but also dysfunction internally. I can see it in their skin, I can see it in their health. I talk to them. And I can just hear it in their voice. Like, this person is uh, just not healthy. It's all about how they look. And it doesn't seem attractive to me anymore. And the reason why I want to say that is there's people listening right now who are so closely, they're, they're grabbing on so hard to their muscular like, goals that any, like, the, any thought of them losing a little bit of muscle because they're going to go on this path of wellness will keep them from doing it. Mm-hmm. And they would look at these people and they like idolize them. And what happens is you start to really see that the true you're the, you're what, what ha- you're ref- it's a reflection of what you think is going to make you happy and when you really move down that path you start to look like i said you start to look at these people and you start to see kind of dece- disease and dysfunction and what's really interesting is the for example we'll talk about bodybuilders you take a pro bodybuilder or even an amateur bodybuilder and you take a bunch of guys who want to build muscle they'll look at that guy and be like i want to look like that guy the average woman looks at that guy and says, he's gross. Those are the words that they use. That person looks gross. And I think it's because- You're using an extreme analogy. Extreme. Yeah. It's bodybuilder. extreme, but uh, but I think- <laughs> That doesn't happen with like a men's physique looking guy. <laughs> uh, well, there's a lot of- there's Ew. A, You know what? Yeah. Think about it. Let me tell you. Yeah. No. Think, no. Well, think about it. We see them. <laughs> think about it. Would, they, would, a, would a physique like a Brad Pitt from Fight Club be more attractive to the mainstream- than a top level men's physique competitor, I think so. I absolutely think so. So there's there's even instinctually those are close though. So yeah, even insti- it, um, yeah, no right. way, dude. Brad Pitt on stage on a men's physique contest would get maybe when it first came out, well, but now the guys are looking if, like well, bodybuilders. Yeah, if you're comp- if you're, of course, of course, yeah. I mean, you know? My point is that he's he's, he's got ripped. millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the other reason. He's got well, a lot of that going for him. I I I want to I want to defend uh, this a little bit though because. One of the things I love about what I, one of the things I love about our show is that we've done a really good job of helping people connect these dots and become more in tune with their relationship with food, with exercise, and with their own body image. And I think that's a lot of our message. Now, during this time that we that we have spent talking about this, I also feel like we have somewhat demonized or made people feel guilty for wanting to look really fucking good. And I think that's not fair. No, I think, no, I don't think so. Either. I think that we have to be careful of that. And I, I just want to put it out there. First of all, a lot of people think they've seen like this crazy transition of me with my ego and all this stuff. Because at the beginning of the show, we, I was labeled as Adam the Ego and... I've been working on all this stuff like that. The The truth of the matter is I happen to be a pretty fucking self-aware, emotional, intelligent guy. And that's what I've been. I, I've read books like this my entire life. So it hasn't been like this huge altering thing for me. And like now I'm I loved men's physique so much. And now I'm like super anti. I love to show people that you can't put me in a box. And you can't categorize me and you can't tell me that I am a bodybuilder or I'm a hipster guy. Like you're about to see me transition back into 
this bodybuilder type of mentality guy, which for me means I'm tracking my food, I'm increasing my volume and training, and I'm I'm checking the scale, I'm measuring my food. I'm going to do those things, and I don't think there's anything wrong with me doing those things. And I'm and my goal is to fucking look really awesome. That's what I'm going to be working on right now. Uh, am I going to still include my mobility? Absolutely. Am I still going to include being mindful and float tank and meditating and brain FM? Absolutely. But there's nothing wrong with going after a physical goal like that. It's understanding and being aware of what that could lead to, which is people identifying with that. I don't identify. I didn't even identify with that before I went into competing, much less when I went through it and it, reached the pinnacle It'll be interesting to it. see how much more, if at all, efficient you may be this time around. You know what I mean? Like how much more effective? I think, I mean, every year that, I mean, I'm 15 plus years into this game. And I think every year I I get a little bit better and a little more in tune. I mean, Abraham Lincoln said it, right? Like, I have no respect for a man that is no wiser t- today than he was yesterday, right? So I, I've, I live by that, that mantra of always growing and always evolving. And I think that every year I'll be better no matter what. I don't, what I don't think is it has anything to fucking do with any books that I've read in the last year. I don't think it has anything to do with me going super mobile guy now. No, I was, that's, a, that's the perception that people might have because they've, they've been paying attention to their show. That's, that hasn't been this great evolution of me. I'm going to go back to like, sometimes like I get it so much now that like, now that makes me want to go back and compete just to show motherfuckers that now I'm not like all stuck in this box and, and think that's so bad. Like there's nothing, when you go into yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think you need to prove yourself to anybody. No, I don't. That's why I won't. But my point is that there, it's not, I don't want people to think that because you have a goal to compete and maybe one day be a pro in men's physique or bodybuilding or bikini, that it, there's something wrong with that. No, I don't you can th- you can do that. You can set goals like that. You can fucking kick ass at it, and you can be very mel- m- mindful and aware of what you're doing. Like I used to when I was competing from day one, I used to tell people I while I was tracking my progress, I'd say, "Listen, here's where the sport of it comes in." Right now, it's it's eight weeks out. I'm eating very healthy, balanced. I'm training very healthy, very balanced. As I get closer to showtime, and now I'm required to look a certain way on stage, watch me go to the sport side of this, and I'm going to start doing things that I'm very aware of that are not ideal well, for th- my body. I think it's important to point out that, uh, first off, there's a there's growth that comes from challenging yourself any any way you do it absolutely so uh i don't want the message to get mixed up that it's like uh, if you go into it right um you challenge yourself whether that means you're climbing mount Mount everest which is not healthy or you compete in a bodybuilding show which is not healthy um you can come out of it with a lot of growth uh and that's true for any uh, challenge on your body i think um you know especially when you've been in fitness as long as uh, you have there's a lot of fun and learning you can do in all aspects of it. And that's, that's just growth. Well, and, still I, being growth minded. and something else I'll tell you right now, if I were to compare the year and a half or two years or whatever it was that I went through competing to, let's say this, the previous or this, this last year or so of, you know, not competing and being mindful and being more connected and reading more, whatever, the amount of growth that I that I, that I made as a trainer, as a coach, as nutrition training, I made more competing than ever in my life that what it, it made me so in tune with my body and I learned so much about food going through that process I've become way better of a coach and a trainer because of it than I ever was previously yeah. and that was because I took my body to these levels and extremes and I be and that's why I, and I know I tease you sometimes Sal because you you talk about being so in tune with your body because for me, I've never been as in tune as I was when I took my body to that level of where I was not only super incredibly lean and depleted, but then I also was tracking everything to the gram. So I could I could increase my carbs by X amount in this day and I would evaluate how I felt. And when I started to connect those dots, it was like, whoa, so much blew my mind about how these foods were affecting me because I was so detailed about it. So that gave me a, a new level of awareness that I would never have accomplished had I not taken myself through that. So, you know, I know I, I'm up on my soapbox about this, but I felt like this is a an important, I'm glad you picked this question because this has been on my mind a lot. And I feel like, yeah. you know, we've definitely, we've attracted a lot of the hippies, you know, we've attracted, know. A, we've attracted a lot yeah. of the people that- I've are, been feeling the same thing. And, and even with the message, well- 
and, and you know why we've gone that direction is because like our our voice like we're we're talking to people that have the same mindset that we had you know forever for years and so to to combat that and to bring them into the more healthy end of things it's led us down into more mindfulness and and you know intuitiveness and and like figuring that piece of it out and extracting yourself from identifying with this uh, like super, superhuman, like body type that we have to like acquire and achieve. Like we're so it, like, I understand why we've gone this direction, but it's, it is at a point where it's like, you know, I got a lot out of sports, you know, like sports challenged me like on every level, like emotionally, physically, uh, you know, like, like everything, like to, to the, to the breaking point, you know, I, I got to points where, um, like my body just felt broken and, and, you know, my, my mental state, like I, I felt beaten down and, and I overcame a lot of shit because of that. And like in the brotherhood and all that kind of stuff that I experienced with that, I would, I wouldn't replace that for the world. Uh, it's just, <laughs> it's the transition process because I don't want to always, I'm not that guy. Like I'm not always that guy. Like right. that, that's an experience. There's always a danger of identifying with anything. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's anything a level, it's a level of, it's a level of awareness while you go through that process. I was just hiking with Taylor over the weekend and he was asking me questions about competing, what that was like. And, you know, cause of all this stuff that we talk about and he's like, Oh, do you, you know, do you see yourself never going or doing, I'm like, no, not at all. Absolutely. I see myself getting like that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something right now. This is the fucking truth. That to this day, there is not a moment that that it does not like that I can't remember more clear in that feeling than the feeling of and I and he had never heard me tell it this way because he hasn't really paid attention to all the bodybuilding shit. I said, listen, USA's when I went to USA's, first of all, those that have no idea about fucking competing, USA's is the most prestigious show besides Olympia. Okay, Olympia is the biggest show, uh, and then USA's is the next biggest show as far as how prestigious it is, as far as who comes, how big it is. It's in Las Vegas. It's all the first place winners in the entire country are going on to one place one time a year to compete to see who the best motherfucker is. The top two people get to go pro. I took second place on that stage. So now imagine when I'm standing inside of... Uh, uh, Wet Republic and Calvin Harris is spinning. So the place is sold out. There's probably 20,000 people fucking in this area. And I'm standing up on the highest VIP booth dancing and enjoying myself after taking second. That means I have for sure, not maybe, the best fucking physique in that entire fucking area at that time. That feeling, that moment was one of the coolest fucking feelings ever. Does that make me a bad person? Does that make me somebody who's like, you know, d identifies with that? Like, no, it's interesting that you would say that, though. Why Why would you say, does that make me? It's like you're defending it so strongly, which... I'm, I'm, defending, I, it, I'm defending it so strongly right now because I feel like our message has been so anti that. That's I, why. I, you've never heard me share it that passionately before, but this conversation that we're having right now is reminding me of that. And this has been on my mind a lot because I feel like we've been on this kind of trend, right? We kind of go in waves on Mind Pump of we've been we've been going the opposite way so long that I don't want to send the message to people that that you should feel bad for that like I don't I shouldn't feel guilty for that that feeling or that moment like that was that was an incredible credible moment and we talk so bad about bodybuilders and like how they're so not aware and this and that. Well, I, we don't necessarily know that. Maybe a majority of them, you know, because I've been around it and I see how bad it is. And we've talked. Well, so there's the bodybuilding that is the minority, which is uh, people who compete all the time. And then there's the bodybuilding, which is the majority. It's just as people who like to lift weights and do bodybuilding exercises. Right. You know, and. Most people um, have no desire to ever step on a stage and compete. Most people just want to lift weights and look good and feel good. And uh, a lot of what we talk to, I think, is that. Those are the people that we talk to the most. We do have a lot of competitors who we talk to. And like any extreme in endeavor, I don't care if it's uh, athletic uh, or mental. You know, I know people who go to school to, be, you know, to pass the bar and go to extremes to do it and lose in touch of their health and their mental sanity just to do that. Mm -hmm. Same holds true for bodybuilding or physique or bikini is that uh, you're going into an extreme endeavor and like any any tool that has that much power, it can, uh, it can affect you very positively or it can affect you very negatively. And you just have to know what you're getting into. Again, 
uh, like anything extreme. I mean, you can go and become addicted to marathons and have horrible uh, results from it. And it can really damage your body and your mind. Or you can go into marathons and come out with uh, and become better as a result. And it really doesn't matter what it is. We talk about bodybuilding because we're closer to that world than I think almost anything else. Or at least, uh, you know, I was a fan of it and Adam competed in it. But it's true for it's true for anything. Yeah, I, I think that's. I think that this was just a good question at a good time because of our message, how, the way it's been for so long. And I think it's important that people know that that you know, I by no means am anti. I don't think we are anti, you know, bodybuilding or getting in shape that way and going to that extreme. You just kind of approach it the same way how we feel about like CrossFit. It's a sport. You know, it's a sport. It's not what's healthiest and ideal for the body to live in that world. You know, year round, year round, like. But it, it is something that I think you can do and be very aware of what you're doing to your body at the time and, and have some sort of balance because there is a lot of good that actually can come from it too. Quick interruption by our sponsors, you guys. Lots of people have been asking us how they can support the Mind Pump Mafia family. Our first one is our Chimera Coffee that we love. You guys go to ChimeraCoffee.com. That's Chimera with a K for 10% off. Don't forget Mind Pump at the checkout. We also have our Big Top Beard Company.com for 33% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. Checkout. Also, Brain FM. We talk so much about this for sleep and meditation. It's Brain.FM for 20% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. You guys, we also talk a lot about books on here all the time. We're using that Audible. You guys can get a free trial, 30-day trial, plus one free audiobook if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump. And then last, we get lots of people asking about Ben Greenfield's CBD supplement, so we hit him up to hook you guys up. You go to getnaturedblend.com forward slash mind pump for that discount. Our next question is from Yin Newley. I recently heard that feeling the burn when lifting is not good. In the past, I always heard people talk about the burn. Is it good? Bad? Please explain. Neither. Ooh, gonorrhea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where are you burning? Yeah, where's, yeah, yeah, where's yeah. the burning sensation yeah. coming burning from? Burning my biscuits. It's, uh, so feel the burn was a um, marketing term coined by the fitness industry to sell. And then repurposed uh, by uh, Bernie Sanders. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that asshole. No, Idiot. <laughs> um, to for, to uh, sell exercise videos. So back in the 70s and 80s, um, like Jane Fonda and who's the other girl? Austin, something, Denise Austin, mm. w- made like tons of money and built these empires selling these home exercise videos to women. And they were all body weight based movements and it was all about you're not going to build big muscles you're going to build no. you're going to tone and sculpt and the way you do it is by doing a shit ton of reps and feel the burn or go for the burn aim for the burn and that was like the the that was their their marketing ploy so now you hear people you know talking about feeling the burn is it good or bad it's neither uh, it's no, it's not good or bad it, it just is a signal that you know there's waste byproducts building up in the muscle Fatigue is building in. It's not lactic acid. We used to think it was lactic acid building up, but it's right. not. Has more to do with uh, like the I think the uh, calcium people, channel. People still yeah. think it's that like yeah. all constantly. Yeah, no, it's not, actually in fact lactic acid helps uh, create more energy for muscles when you're when you're moving. Um, it's just a plus sign. you would die if that happened, right? If you had all that much buildup of lactic acid, you would die. <laughs> I like, think your muscle, you, would, yeah, yeah. Uh, if your bloodstream like had that much, you away. Yeah, yeah, built up in it, you would die from it. So yeah, that's not no, a, it's not the lactic acid. It has something to do with calcium, the calcium, calcium channels. Uh, Although that's what muscle. I used to say when I was yeah. a young trainer. Yeah, same here. I remember. Me too. That. <laughs> um, <laughs> Damn it! You can uh, train your body so that it doesn't, your muscles don't burn as soon. So you know, if I did an exercise with twelve pound dumbbells and I did twenty reps and it really burns like crazy at rep 25 and I can't do anymore. Mm -hmm. As I get more endurance, as my muscles become more efficient Mm -hmm. at utilizing energy and getting rid of waste, uh, I'll burn at 30 reps or 35 reps. So, But no, it's just a signal that fatigue is happening and there's waste building up. Mm -hmm. It's not something you need to aim for necessarily. Just listen to it like any other signal. Some training, you have no burn. I mean, Phase one of... Yeah, you don't get a lot of burn at all. When you're you're working five rep range, there's little burn. There's no burn at all. You get a lot of... I could sit and put my arms out to my sides and rotate into little circles, and I'll get my shoulders on fire after about two or three minutes of doing that uh, you know, nonstop. Is that going to give me the best results for muscle building? Good analogy. No. It's not going to give me the best results at all. I'll build a little bit of endurance within very short range of motion. 
So you got to be careful when you hear people saying like, no, you have to aim for this. Like, here's the fatigue you're looking for. Here's oh, the it's feeling. good to bring up because, I mean, like, like you just mentioned with like the phase one type training, it's like people are like, oh, I don't know if I got anything out of that, you know, because they're not feeling a burn afterwards. And it's like there's too much rest, right. you know, and it's just like they don't understand like the, the process. Like we're focusing on central nervous system training. Like, right. we're, like we're not trying to – to get you to a place where it's like, uh, I'm feeling that super muscle fatigue, you know? Well, ch chasing the burn reminds me of people who chase the pump. You know, it's very mm -hmm. similar. Very similar. Very yeah. similar and I, I know we talk a lot about that. This was, a, this was a major game changer for me also. Where we talk about paradigm shattering moments was when I started training in that one to five rep range, you know, because even as a trainer, I used to think to myself like, well, there's no, I never need to compete. I never need to lift maximum weight like that. I, I don't care. I don't know what my bench, what my squat, what my deadlift, what my, my max is. I never lift less than eight to 10 reps. You know, I was always chasing the pump. I had a very, I trained very much so a bodybuilder uh, mentality, even though I knew the benefits of the different phases, I still stuck to that, which is crazy to me, which was also, I think, what leads us all to know that there's probably tens of thousands of people that are listening that are probably the same way too, that are chasing this burn or chasing this pump. And if you're somebody who's like that, nothing's going to benefit you more than probably heading over to the one to five rep range because you're going to get some huge results from that because you never train that way. And the, the opposite is true. If you're the guy or girl who just loves to max out, who never and, feels the burn. Yeah, yeah. never feels yeah. the burn. It hits PRs. Guess what? Go in and hit some some supersets, chase the pump, and find the burn, and watch what kind of results you will, you're going to get from that. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting that you say that. It's a great point because um, I think what's what may be more important to focus on is understand the type of fatigue uh, that you're going to feel or the body signals you're going to feel based on the type of adaptation that you're trying to yeah. elicit. So I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm doing uh, explosive plyo training. The last thing I want to feel when I'm doing plyo training is a burn. Mm -hmm. uh, once I start to get fatigue in that particular sense, you're done. I'm no longer teaching my body to be explosive with its contractions. Now I'm training simply for endurance. Yeah, it's now become an anaerobic. Yeah, and I'm just and I just I seem to, I, I'm just aerobic, doing box sorry. jump uh, box jumps as a result. You know, I'm, I'm I'm doing box jumps for endurance, which I might as well just go for a run or you know get on the stairmaster. Mm -hmm. um, with plyo jumps, I'm not looking for the burn at all. What I'm looking for is the ability to explode as quickly and as forcefully as possible, which means in between jumps, I need to rest as long as it takes for me to be able to do that. Yeah. And when I notice that I'm no longer explosively creating this forceful you know, jump, I'm done. I'm done with the exercise. And what you'll notice when you do plyo jumps is the first couple sets, you're almost getting into the groove by the third, fourth set, you're jumping harder and higher than you were before. And once you start to see that detriment, you're done with your training. Mm -hmm complete opposite from training for a burn or for a pump. Now, on the flip side, if I'm training for muscle endurance and I'm not getting a burn, then I may want to aim for it a little bit, right? I may want to kind of go for that particular feel. So learn to understand what you're aiming for, what you're, feel, what you're trying to feel for that type of adaptation. If I'm training for maximal strength, all I'm trying to do when I'm deadlifting for sets of one to three reps is I'm trying to feel as strong and as mm -hmm. tight as possible. And when that hardcore, when that fatigue starts to set in, where those sets, now I'm really fatigued, yeah. I'm done. I'm You're done with that type of training. You're trying to channel into that highest amplitude you could possibly produce right then, and then that's it. I think if people start thinking of exercise as practice, yeah. they'll train so much more effectively versus beat myself up or do something to my muscle. When you think like that, it yeah. tends to stir... You know, or to, do squatted uh, yeah. shoulder raises. Yeah, exactly. I think it, <laughs> Fucking idiots. It starts to steer you in the wrong direction a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, Where I'm yeah. like, no, I got to... If I'm thinking of practice and I'm perfecting this movement and aiming for this particular adaptation, you tend to be a little smarter with your training. Well, mm -hmm. th this month, all month long, we <clears throat> we're doing something that we've never done before, which I'm really excited about, which is that we're starting a starter pack bundle, which is like, okay, if we have somebody who's just coming on board, they're listening to the show, what is the ideal way for us to start off with our programming? <clears throat> and that would be our MAPS Red program with our nutrition, with our fasting guide and access to the forum. So right now that's going to be running all month long. And you'll see within MAPS Red, 
there's going to be a phase where you're going to feel that burn. And then there's going to be another phase where you don't feel that at all. And they're both very important to you maximizing your results. So there is a way to phase that in and out. And in that program alone, you're going to get all those benefits from that. Uh, to be clear, this episode is actually going to release, I think, on the last day of May. Yeah. So that's the promotion for uh, June. But we'll start it. Since you said that, we'll start it today. And that's taking those things that you mentioned Ooh. and making a massive discount. And the reason why we're doing it is because we've got a new flood of listeners mm-hmm. coming in from some of the other podcasts that we've been on. So if, if that's okay, Doug, we can run that, start that on the last day of the month. Yeah, sounds good. Let's Excellent. get it going. All right. All right. Our next question is from Sarah Gets Fit underscore recovered. What are your thoughts on cluster sets? Are they effective or are they a recipe for injury? So I'm, I'm assuming they're talking about uh, circuits, right? When you combine like three or they're more a exercises. They're cluster of fuck. Yeah, you, where you put three or more exercises together and do them. Mm-hmm. Now, the, 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 the typical way people think of circuits is they think of circuits as these like fatigue-based uh, type workouts or fatigue-based type programming. So I'm doing 20 reps here, 20 reps there, 20 reps on another exercise and I'm just getting really exhausted and trying to burn a lot of calories. And my goal with the circuit is to burn more calories in a shorter period of time and lift weights at the same time. Mm. That's one way to do a cluster set or a circuit. It's, in my view, also the least effective way of doing them. I love to do circuits or cluster sets with strength training. I like to put three heavy sets together. In fact, I just did it today where I did a single or a double of squats dips and pull-ups. And so I do like a heavy single with squats, rack up the weight, walk over to the dips, strap the weight around my waist, a heavy single or double with dips, walk over to the pull-up uh, to the pull-up right. bar, weight around my waist. With your most demanding one first. Yes. And what I find with that is it gives me this total body anabolic signal. Hmm. It also teaches my body to be able to exert strength in these different planes and different movements. And it's just another... It's like I'm throwing my body uh, a curveball in terms of adaptation. So then the other way I like to do cluster sets is I'll do opposing body parts. So I'll go hamstring, quad, or back chest, bicep, tricep, which are more like supersets. Um, I think they're very effective if used properly. I think they can be a recipe for injury mm-hmm. when you're doing a shit ton of fatigue-based programming and somewhere towards the end of your circuit, you're doing a very technical exercise like... Uh, you know, overhead squat or a snatch or a clean. And that uh, that definitely is not a good idea because I, you're I, doing very technical movement. I think you need to get rid of them. And I'll tell you why. Did you, have you been on her page yet? No. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address you. Oh, you're going to address it directly I'm going to address you directly. And the reason why I'm looking at her page right now and she's she used to have an eating disorder and she's uh, looks like she's doing great now with uh, starting to become, with working on her body uh, image issues. And gaining weight is like her main focus right now. So if you get up on her page right now, you'll see that she used to be like super extreme running, starving her body mm. and and struggled with her body image. Now, cluster setting, super setting, high intensity workouts are feeding into that same issue that you've always had. In fact, your training should probably have long rest periods and you should be training heavy and I would get out all the st- – and maybe you're not ready to transition here yet, but this is the direction that you you need to go eventually. And this is very common with somebody who has these body image issues where they feel that they – as soon as they eat, they got to go run it off right away because they, they yeah. ate 500 calories, and so they need to go run until they've surpassed 500 calories. So maybe you've gotten better about that and you've just now transitioned over using weight training instead of running as that. And so you're doing these high intensity type workouts. You're kind of trading one thing for the other. You're just getting more benefits because now you're resistance training. So you're probably building a little bit of muscle. If you want to really move on and continue to grow on the body image issues that you suffered from before, then I would not recommend, and I've dealt with many clients in the exact same shoes that that you were in and that you're currently in right now, and I would not be doing cluster sets. I would not be doing supersets. I would not be doing hit workouts. All those things are feeding into the stuff that you've struggled. And, and her body probably just plain and simple ne- needs. Yes, yeah. it'll strive. Stri- yeah, straight with just straight strength training. Straight set strength training. Yeah. Focus on basic like like maps anabolic for her would be perfect. And in fact, I would even have her take out the supersets of phase three and just do the higher rips of phase three. But phase one 
for you, Sarah, will uh, blow your fucking mind. Your body will respond yeah. so well um, from training with. Stri- I mean, Adam's right on the button because I looked at. I just looked at your page. And also. that's a that's a mental, mm-hmm. you know, discipline. That's a, that's that's something that's going to be a struggle to do. But like, just just rest in the fact that it's it's so different and 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 shocking and hard for you know you to wrap your brain around that it's going to be transformative for your body. You, you're, and you got. And here's another thing too. Like when you um, look at some of these pages, I'm not I'm not talking about her anymore. I'm talking about just in general. You'll see, and if you just be objective, you'll see lots of signs that this person has, uh, they've progressed to another level, but they've taken their obsession with food and it's moved into another phase, which yep. is better than where it was, mm-hmm. but it's still an obsession. And the way you can tell is if you look at your own page, if you, all of us who are listening, look at your own page. And if you're someone that's dealt with body image issues, scroll through your feed, through your all, all your pictures and if most of your pictures or a lot of your pictures are of food and they're of foods that are like, I mixed you know cookies and cream with this and I was able to take peanut butter and put it on this and it fits my macros and here's some pancakes that I, and it's all centered around that, you've taken your food obsession and just moved it to another level, but it's still there. You still have it. And that bleeds into exercise obsession as well. And I'm, I'm not saying this to single people out and I don't want you to feel bad about what you're doing, but be very objective and like Adam said, you, one of your best things you may want to try doing is going the opposite direction. If you were super endurance, super well, I just want to whatever, I just want to point out too that you're extremely common, believe it or not. You are not alone. Mo- and I just said this on the episode the other day. It's amazing. Most of the people that are like we're we're all the opposite people are doing the opposite things, right? Like the 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 hippie crunchy people that are doing all the meditating and the relaxing and being mindful and grounded and pleasant, they need some fucking beast mode in their life. They need to do some cluster sets. They need to superset. They need to go get after it every once in a while. Putting that stress on their body would probably do a lot of good for them. Unfortunately, they're so that extreme that they 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 they're anti that, right? And then the people that are beast mode, getting after it, running like crazy, cluster setting, super setting like crazy, those motherfuckers could probably be mindful a little bit and slow down and actually train like one to five reps and rest two to three minutes between the rest and maybe go do some meditating. So, you know, I think all of us are guilty of this. And I think all of us should look at ourselves and go like, well, where where do I fall? And, you know, do I, do I find a way to kind of incorporate all that? So- we are, we're all going to gravitate towards one or the other for whatever reasons, whether it be we had an eating disorder or we just we played sports when we were younger or we gravitate to a certain way. It doesn't matter. Point being that we're, we're all naturally going to gravitate one way or the other. And it's learning to be objective, like Sal said, and look at that and say, you know, oh, wow, could this be a, another form of what I kind of was doing just a little bit? It's a little less worse than what it was before. And, you know, when I look at the profile, and you ask a question like this with cluster sets, it, cluster sets. Well, if you were a client of mine, I'll tell you right now, we would not be doing cluster sets. No, you'd be in phase one. Yeah, a map set of uh, uh, and maybe longer than than normal because mm-hmm. I think that if you, if anything, you would benefit from staying in that type of training for a while longer than the average person. So just keep that in mind. Next question is from Polka Dot Squats. What do you think of the fat but fit movement? Oh, good question. Polka dot squats. That's uh, Brianna, a good friend of mine. Um, I coached her for a little while. She just did took third place in her first powerlifting. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Um, uh, so she's on our forum. Uh, congratulations to her. She was awesome to work with. This is a great question. The fat but fit movement. So I like. Uh, I definitely like the message behind it because. People in their healthy states, when they're represented uh, in their truest sense of their healthy states, come in different shapes and sizes. That means some of us are going to look leaner than others. Some of us are going to be curvier or heavier. That means some men are going to be... We're going to be husky. Some men are going to have a little little bit more body fat on them, and some guys are going to be a little skinnier, more ectomorphish, and this is true for for women as well. And this means that some people are going to be bigger, but be very healthy and very fit. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think there's a big problem with, uh, and we, I mean, God, I'm going to be preaching to the choir here, right? When you look at all the marketing that comes at us, the uh, the understanding that we start to get, even as children, is that healthy looks like young and lean. That's what healthy is. Healthy is young and lean. And if you're anything but young and lean, it's not attractive. So even if you're 
lean, but you're old, you don't, you're not healthy. Or if you're heavier because that's your, that's just your body's natural, that's your body's, uh, you know, authentic representation of its health, that you're not healthy. You have to be this, you know, what we see in magazines and what we see on the internet, which is super unattainable and is one particular way of looking. And many times doesn't represent health, even in the people that are, you know, posing for these pictures online. So I like the base of the fat but fit movement. You can definitely be based on, you know, model, you know, mainstream model, uh, you know, uh, standards, fat, uh, which by the way is not, is not hard to do, right? You can be overweight based on those standards, but be very healthy, have a great mindset, uh, be very fit to where you can perform. Um, I've known some athletes that never had a six pack in their lives but could fucking outperform. And look, okay, <laughs> look one of the best... Fedor. I was just going to say, yeah. one of the best fighters of all time in mixed martial arts uh, was Doey. He looked Doey. Now, mm. he didn't look he didn't look shredded, and I don't think he was fat. Like, if you met him in person, you'd be like, ooh, that's a big dude. But he wasn't like this ripped avatar of, you know, what we would think in a video game or what a you mm. know good fighter should look like. And that dude could kick everyone's ass and did not get tired. Yeah. Uh, his brother was Great the same endurance. way. Uh, look at that other fighter. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the dude with the beard. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was uh, just trying to think of his right. name too. Like big country. Big country is another guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you're just like, man. He's got a huge gut, and uh, man, the power that guy could produce. But and the he, way you he thought moves. he was, yeah, you thought he would like get exhausted. I was like, oh my god, this guy is gonna get you know destroyed. And he was just killing fools. He was. And then I know people who, from a, a, when you look at them, you look at their body, you're like, wow, that person looks super fit. And they've got all these health problems. They've got all these mental issues with exercise and nutrition. Um, and they're not, you know, like overall fit. So fat but fit movement, I totally support it. Now, here's the problem with it. Mm. It also becomes this like rally cry for people was, who, This is where I was yes. going to chime in. I was wondering yeah. if you're going to go here. Okay. Of course. Yeah. You just mentioned this on the show the other day that somebody asked, um, what was the question they asked that led you to talk about this? Um, I, I love my body. Yes, I'm proud yeah, of my body. I don't care what, you know. Yeah. Just like anything else, there, you know, whenever a movement period happens, we just got the beginning of this episode was about the whole fucking mindfulness and hippie movement. And then what happens? Extreme. You know, there's always, everybody has to take everything to the fucking extreme, man. It's That's like, hu- it's human nature, yeah. dude. It it's is. It's always going to happen. It's like there's a lot of good that can come from this fat but fit movement. But then, uh, of course, what that turns into is actually a bunch of really insecure people about being fat that are trying to use that as a, a shield to hand, to deal with the issues that they're really dealing with inside because they're unhappy. Because if you're really truly, you know, fit and taking care of your body, uh, your body will normally reflect it. Like yeah. if you, you, you can see that. You can see it on their skin. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it on their weight. You should. You won't be carrying, you know, thirty extra pounds of body fat on you if you're if you're yeah. really really healthy. And it, well, and- it's great to to build that confidence. You know, wherever you are, as far as like, okay, if, uh, if I'm overweight, but now all of a sudden I have all this like extra confidence to carry myself with this, but. Let's now channel that into improvement, you know, like, let's not just stop there and be like, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm so great. And I love my body. And then that's where I become complacent uh, to where like I can, I can improve, become healthier uh, and whatever that looks like, everybody's individual, like we're trying to describe with that. But yeah, it becomes, a, it becomes a, a, an excuse. And in right. fact, I don't like, I don't even like the way that they named it. Like, what does that mean? Fat, but fit yeah. like what it, like it's almost like you're like oh i'm apologizing for the i'm, I'm fat but hold on a second it's i know kind I'm of fat, an o- it's kind of an oxymoron but i'm also fit like what does that what does that mean why don't we just call it like fit why don't we just call it the fit movement or just the health movement right why is this whole fat but fit it's also you know if you're identifying your body image by uh what you don't look like um then you have a problem what i mean by that is like oh i'm not skinny like that person over there but i'm fit like what if that person didn't exist? What would you be? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That yeah. whole contrast, that type of thing. Like uh, I've seen body shaming, like accepting, you know, acceptable body shaming is when you body shame skinny people. This, yeah, yeah. Like for some reason, it's cool. That's a great point. To talk about, she's got a flat ass. Yeah. Um, she's skinny. She's got bones. Men want, you know, 
um, women with real curves yeah, or, or thickness, you guys, yeah. yeah, or guys are like you know abs on a skinny guys, like yeah, tits then, on a fat girl or whatever. Right. Like it, it's it's all the same shit. Like, right? Oh my god, I can see your ribs. It's all, it's eh. all the same shit. And look, just shitting on everybody. The goal should always be to love your body. Now let's just examine that for a second. If you truly love and care for your body, you're going to eat a certain way, just the way it is. You're not going to feed it bad foods a lot. You may, you might sometimes, because there's other benefits to sometimes celebrating things like birthdays and holidays and, hey, I'm going to drink with my friends because we're bonding and we're enjoying this, you know, this moment together. But you're not going to do it very often because you truly love your body. Loving your body doesn't mean I love my body and I don't care about my body. So I'm going to do whatever I want to my body. Well, that's the opposite right. of loving yeah. your body. That's not loving your body. It's hating your body and hating yourself. And that's where you can get some of the negatives of this this particular movement. And like anything, people will take it, identify with it, and uh, turn take, it into something. Right, take it to the extreme. Take it to the extreme. <laughs> so Take it to the limit. Take, take it, it to the limit. What was that in? Was that Scarface? <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, I think it was Scarface. Was it? Yes, it was. Hey, 30 30 Days of Coaching, uh, we have it at mindpumpmedia.com. It's free for anybody. It is an amazing resource of fitness information. Um, It's, uh, I mean, packed full of information with podcast episodes where we timestamp, where we talk about particular subjects, bullet points on those subjects, studies to back up our opinions uh, and methods of training and exercise and meditation and all these different types of things. Highly recommended. Everybody does it, whether you're a beginner or advanced, but especially if you're a beginner, you get it at mindpumpmedia.com. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we can answer on these Q&A episodes, the place to do it is on Instagram. You go to Instagram. Mind Pump Media is the page. Ask the questions there. If we like your questions, we'll answer them on air. And lastly, each of us have our own Instagram pages, and they're all unique, and they all provide different fitness value. You can find my page at Mind Pump Sal, Adam is at Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.